Excuse me, little dog. All right, guys. Well, I am thrilled to say it has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous winter day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, where the great Arctic white snowpack is beginning to melt here in upstate New York. Looking at 41 today and starting tomorrow, no chance of freezing temperatures in the forecast as far as they can see into the future. So there you go, but this is not a, uh, not directly a talk about weather whiplash and the convoluted jet stream. Other doomers cover that. Uh, but in, oh, before I start today, before I start today's Chronicle of the Collapse, I just want to send out a little personal message to anybody at Homeland Security, the FBI, or anybody else monitoring this subversive channel down here in the dark web. Uh, there's a fellow, you're probably aware of this man, he is a psychologist in Pennsylvania by the name of Robert Griffin. He's probably all, you probably already have a dossier on this man. Uh, I just want anyone in Homeland Security or the FBI to know that I actually met up with Robert Griffin yesterday and had a fascinating conversation. Uh, and if anybody at Homeland Security or the FBI would like to talk to me further about uh, Robert Griffin, uh, just, you can contact me at collapsechronicles at gmail.com and we could have a fruitful conversation. But anyway, uh, now that I've uh, had my little private chat with Homeland Security and the FBI, go to today's uh, Chronicle of the Collapse, and guys, I'm a little leery of running this. The only reason I'm going ahead with this rant is to welcome the new, what are we, 1,800 new subscribers uh, coming over here to Collapse Chronicles who found me on soft white underbelly and who are thinking that they might have stumbled into a political channel. I, I kind of touched on this a few days ago. I'm going to have a political rant now, and then hopefully this will explain it once and for all, and then I will be done with it. Um, so reading through the almost 5,000 uh, comments, uh, you know, the tsunami of hate mail that I have been receiving from all of the clueless moron uh, normies out there who stumbled across, <laughs> who stumbled across my video. First, I want to thank uh, the 4,000 haters spewing all this vitriol at me calling me a, calling me a clueless moron whatsoever. I, I really appreciate you uh, confirming and validating everything I said in that interview. Uh, this, that, that the comments section <laughs> to that video have been the single greatest confirmation and validation of uh, my worldview uh, that I have ever received in my life. I am eternally grateful to all of you clueless morons. But uh, what I really want to talk about are the clueless morons uh, calling me who listened to that video and came to the absolutely hilarious conclusion that I am a lefty. Sorry, little dog. We're gonna. These are just some, just some of the comments, just the, the last comments still pouring out a week after this uh, video. Clearly still a radical leftist 
and delusional. Yes, here is everyone is a clueless moron except left-wing people. Hmm, here is, uh, well, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass over that that comment as good as it is. Uh, let's see. Plot twist. You thought he was a right wing conspiracy theorist. He is a left wing conspiracy theorist. And finally, typical leftist lunatic. <laughs> Typical leftist lunatic. And uh, we're going to come back to a, uh, a, another essay from this fellow I read from yesterday called Indica in, in a few minutes. But before I get over to Indica, I, I just want to uh, once again uh, I, I explain that, the, well, I'm just trying to figure out where the confusion came from that uh, Sam Mitchell or any other doomer uh, worth his or her salt is a, is a leftist, is some sort of lefty or, or any, any other political stripe. And, and the problem was, is that, and, and I do admit uh, that I made a tactical error very early in that interview calling Trump tards clueless fucking morons. Part of that basket of deplorables that that evil bitch uh, um, Hillary Clinton labeled anybody who voted for Donald Trump. Now, of course, I could have said just as well anybody in that basket of deplorables who voted for Hillary Clinton. Okay, but uh, I didn't. So all of these Trump tards uh, just automatically assumed because I did not vote for Donald Trump that I did vote for Hillary Clinton and as probably a hundred people uh, assumed that I voted for Joe Biden, which uh, if they knew how hilarious that was. <coughs> but one of the, I probably got about 30 comments from Trump tards uh, pointing out uh, you clueless moron, uh, Sam Mitchell, uh, that it is people who voted for Donald Trump who are the true doomers, that there are more doomers who voted for Donald Trump, more, uh, more people who voted for Donald Trump than, uh, I guess, assumedly, that voted for Hillary Clinton uh, understand uh, how doomed we are. And, uh, you know, I, I've been thinking about that comment, and, and I have to say, particularly after that tweet, I think it was Christmas Eve, that Donald Trump made, what did he say, uh, calling the United States a failed state, and that we are, what, what did Donald say, are, are we on the edge of collapse? Uh, you know, I, I was cheering the man on. Uh, I, I could have been the biggest Trump tart out there. And so I, I guess my, my problem when I made that comment about Trump tards, as I explained in that interview, I swim around in what is called the deep end of the doomsday prophecy pool, which is the ecological collapse of this planet is where I center my attention. Now, I am very interested uh, also in the shallow end of the Doomsday Prophecy Pool, and this is, you know, all of the various economic, uh, societal, civilizational 
collapse angles, you know, dealing with humans, the human-centric end of, uh, of the doomsday prophecy pool. Uh, people just predicting correctly uh, what's coming down the pike. And, and after reading and thinking about these comments and reading that tweet, that very intelligent tweet from Donald Trump on, on Christmas Eve, they are probably right. As far as that is concerned, that whole part, uh, my guess is that, quote, right-wingers uh, are more uh, doomers than, uh, than lefties. So I do apologize to any right-wing doomer Trump tard pointing out to me uh, that, you know, that people of their ilk uh, understand uh, as well as anyone, you know, how doomed we, meaning humans, meaning the economy, meaning the society, meaning the civilization are. But since I swim around down here in the deep end, in the ecological end, what I was referring to, calling uh, Trump tards, uh, you know, clueless effing morons, as opposed to your, just your regular body of clueless morons, is that anybody who voted for Donald Trump uh, has no clue what is going on down here in the deep end. And that is the ecological collapse of the planet. They, uh, if they hear somebody talking about this, uh, they have no comprehension on any level whatsoever about what anybody talking about the ecological collapse of this planet is talking about. They are completely clueless, completely ignorant. They are in total denial, and they have exactly zero interest in the single biggest story in the history of humanity and the single biggest story on this planet in the last 66 million years. They have no interest in it. They are unreachable. So that is what I, that is what I was referring to. Now my guess is <clears throat> that a few of us hardcore doomers uh, who understand that the ecological collapse of this planet is the single biggest story in 66 million years. My guess is that the majority of us did come from the left, that at one point in our lives we were lefties. And my guess is that the vast majority of apocaloptimists uh, which we'll get into in a minute here in this article from Indica, the vast majority of apocaloptimists, you, you know, those people who understand, who do understand uh, how completely screwed this entire planet is, uh, but just think it's going to turn out okay anyway, my guess is that 98% of apocaloptimists uh, are lefties. So there you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the apocaloptimism, uh, you know, which is, you know, the, the doomer adjacent group to the left. And I'm going to give uh, people who understand that the United States is a failed state, I'm going to give that to the right. But the bottom line here is, guys, which obviously I did not uh, make clear uh, in that interview, I, I could only, you know, I could only 
get in. I, I, you know, I had like 40 minutes to uh, describe uh, a, a fort, you know, a worldview that I've been describing for 14 years. Uh, so I just didn't have time to get into this, that political affiliation has absolutely nothing to do with the doomosphere. If you are a doomer, if you call yourself a doomer and you still align yourself with any, any political ideology, you are not a doomer. Okay, you're, you're not a doomer, and if if you actually believe on any level that your particular political party, your philosophy, your candidate, uh, whatever, is going to do anything to turn this train around, you are. Uh, pretty much a a as much in denial a as every other clueless moron on this planet. This has what's going on on this planet. It, 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 it's, it's so far beyond politics. Uh, but you better believe the, the infamous nefarious they are using, you know, these, this false dichotomy. Uh, this, this bullshit false debate between the right and the left uh, about uh, who is, has a better chance uh, of turning this freight train around at this point. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's the divide and conquer routine. It is the, the, this false debate uh, between the false right and the false left uh, is just one a very successful way to keep anybody still clinging to some ridiculous notion that there is any sort of political solution to this. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's keeping us from becoming doomers as we cling to that, and eventually uh, a few of us uh, former lefties in my case, and uh, former right-wingers in the cases of people who have pointed this out to me, uh, at some point uh, we are going to realize how we are being played like fish by the political system. I want, uh, I, I want nothing to do uh, w with either side, anybody, uh, looking at me and, and acting like Donald Trump, Joe Biden, the AOC, uh, United Nations, uh, anybody in between is going to come up with a political solution to uh, the shit show unfolding on this planet. Uh, I, I, I really have nothing to say to you. I have nothing but pity for you. And I invite you to uh, listen to some of my hundreds of videos on this channel and all of the excellent work uh, being produced by my fellow Doomers, both here on YouTube and on this new, uh, on this new <clears throat> website I found called medium.com. So yesterday, if you, uh, if you listened to my video yesterday, I just discovered this fellow who calls himself Indica. His name is Indrajit Samarahiva from Sri Lanka. Never heard of this man until yesterday. So uh, this rant was kind of rolling around in my head. And uh, so what do you think Indica, what do you think Medium.com showed up today? This was actually written back in May, assuming 2022. 
I'm just going to read uh, a, a little bit of this that's germane to uh, this discussion. He titled, the title of the essay is, Which Doomer Are You? A New Political Map. Okay. Um, anyway... I, I need to cut through a whole lot of it and, and get to the point. I'll put the link on here because this is good. Uh, and you know what? He, what he, his political map is 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 a big circle. I would call it uh, an onion. And and what he does is he starts at the top of the circle or the outermost layer of the onion and he digs deeper and deeper and deeper through the doomosphere with his own brand of labels. Don't They don't quite fit mine. I don't see Apocaloptimist in here uh, and, and, and a few others, but he does a, a pretty good job of... Uh, of looking at the political map of what kind of doomer are you? Okay, so most of us start in the world as we know it, which is increasingly gone. We're left holding train tickets to the ocean, visiting future ruins. Our politics is an outdated guidebook to a place that will not exist. It's like picking up a copy of Lonely Planet Atlantis. So at the top, and I don't even know why he includes them anywhere in the Doomosphere, he has the, what he just simply calls the deniers. Who are the deniers? Liberals, neoliberals, conservatives, socialists, progressives, libertarians, these are all borders on a map. Meanwhile, the very earth beneath is irreversibly shifting. This uh, political scientist David Pollard calls all of these old political camps deniers. All of these ways of organizing a civilization are based on some sense of planetary stability which is gone. When the sands shift, every pyramid, e uh, when the sands shift, even pyramids fall down. All of these pharaohs of the possible, of the possible there you go. Pharaohs of the possible will be entombed in their ignorance forever. And we, their servants, buried with them. So there you go. It, it's the, the, you know, the top, the, the shallowest layer of the onion uh, are these people still in denial. It, 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 anybody who labels themselves a liberal, a conservative, a neoliberal, a socialist, a progressive, a libertarian, I I anybody assigning a political label to themselves is a denier, what I call a clueless moron. Okay. But if we go off the usual map of what's possible, we can confront the impossible, the end of the world as we know it. People have different ways of dealing with collapse. Some bargain, some rage, some grieve, but it's all weird from here on out. As ye old map says, here be dragons. So then what he starts doing is uh, digging through the layers of the onion of the Doomosphere, getting deeper and deeper uh, into dragon territory. 
start with the salvationist. <clears throat> Some people who Pollard calls salvationist believe that this global civilization can be saved. Some think institutions will save us. Some think it will be new tech gods. Some think a new age is dawning. Some think we'll reason our way out of this. Old-timey religions say, I told you so, and wait for the rapture to come on. Globalists think that current institutions and governments will somehow save us. Technotopians, I call them techno-utopians, think the geeks will inherit the earth, that some incredible invention will save our butts. You know, like solar panels, wind turbines, and electric vehicles, for instance. Many believe that their mechanical Madai is already here and worship Elon Musk as their techno king. Meanwhile, the bearded prophet Jack Dorsey roams the earth, promising world peace through Bitcoin. I honestly don't understand the integrals. Let's leave that one out. Whether the Messiah is bureaucratic, mechanical, or metaphysical, these people all believe that some sort of cavalry is coming. And uh, I'm surprised that Indica uh, has never heard the term or has rejected the term apocaloptimist. You know, the, these apocaloptimists are, uh, you know, as you dig down, uh, you go through uh, the uh, the the usual chain of events, so, you know, from clueless moron deniers to all of these apocaloptimists, to uh, as you dig d deeper, uh, you find fewer and fewer people down there uh, as you get closer and closer to the uh, bottom of the doomosphere. Meanwhile, rapturists are laughing. They've been ready since Jesus was crucified at Calvary at the beginning of the common area, at the of the common era. A more difficult place to be is in the humanist camp, where I think a lot of you still are. This is the idea of a collective Messiah. That if we all just think this and do that insert medium article here, we will be saved. That human reason will lead us out. Then we get to the collapse nicks. I prefer the term collapsitarian, collapse nicks, collapsitarian. As you get deeper into the doomosphere, you now get to the level of the collapse nicks. Now, we cross the Rubicon, or at least dip our boats in it. Some people have gone past bargaining with fate to accepting it. These are those that Pollard calls collapsniks, and those on the border between bargaining and acceptance are as follows, and these would be the resilience movement and neo-survivalist, otherwise known as preppers. The transition resilience movement thinks that getting ready together might save us. They're like humanitarians that are more prepared to accept heavy losses. Neo-survivalist, you know what most of us call preppers, also think they can get ready, but in a more combative, walking dead sense, i.e. inflicting heavy losses. They likely have disturbingly detailed opinions 
about cannibalism. <laughs> okay, so uh, be uh, be beyond that, and I'm a little bit confused. Uh, so below the below the resilience and the preppers, we get to the communitarians who are like humanist with more realistic expectations rather than expecting everyone to change their minds and change everything they hope to gather a few like-minded people and change a few square kilometers <clears throat> existentialists are i assume the more lonely types who would prefer the people to be fewer and those few kilometers to be on a hill? Uh, and then uh, we get to the, what he calls just above the bottom, the deepest level, and uh, I'm a little bit confused by this. This is the near-term extinctionist. And of course, the, as the leader of the near-term extinctionist, they quote uh, one of the single biggest clueless morons anywhere in the Doomosphere whose name we do not mention uh, on this site. Near-term extinctionist. Now we get closer to Mount Doom itself. Near-term extinctionists think that we're fucking ourselves to death. They're preparing not so much for a new beginning as the end. And what uh, he did not mention here, maybe he's not aware of, uh, is the fact that these clueless morons following, uh, it's, it's a cult pretty much, with a well-known cult leader uh, down here in the Doomosphere. I don't insult my intelligence or your intelligence by breathing this clueless moron's name. Uh, I think he is still saying that humans are going to be extinct by the year 2026, although he might be slipping back now uh, saying that humans are going to be extinct by 2030. Now, as we'll getting ready to say, as much as I wish that humans were going to be extinct by 2026 or 2030, ain't going to happen. Anybody down here in the Doomosphere so clueless to think for one nanosecond that humans are going to be extinct by the year uh, 2026 or hell 2030 are every bit as clueless as the most diehard Trump tard or Hillary tard. Okay. You're, 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 you're completely clueless. You are an embarrassment to the Doomosphere. Okay, and then finally, we get down to the very bottom, share the very bottom, I guess the deepest layer of the Doomsday Onion, uh, shared by a uh, voluntary extinctionist and deep green activist. And uh, he quotes John Gray uh, as a voluntary extinctionist. The sooner humans vanish from the planet, the better. And then uh, his pretty much his twin, of course, Derek Jensen, under the deep green activist, smash and undermine civilization now to diminish its damage. So now we are nearing the end 
where people really believe in the end. Voluntary extinctionists not only think we are going extinct, they think the sooner the better. They are like basically every Marvel villain who in a cosmic sense might actually be the heroes and uh, sharing the, uh, the bottom layer of the Doomosphere onion are the deep green activists, the children of Kali, who think not only that civilization is crashing, but that it should be smashed. We, meaning humans, are destroying the earth of ages out of sheer inertia and laziness. We are melting continents of ice flows for a few quarters of cash flow. Might as well stop the party now and get to the cleanup. Where are you on the map? <laughs> There you go. Well, I'm proud to say that uh, I am at the very bottom of, uh, I am proud to say that uh, Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles uh, is in the bottom layer, in the deepest, darkest netherlands of the Doomsday Onion. I, uh, I am proud to, I am a proud unrepentant uh, <laughs> resonant of the deepest layer of the Doomsday Onion. And uh, if, if anyone wants to come down here and, and join me, uh, you're welcome to. But uh, guys, if, if I'm a little bit too heavy for you, there are, how many was it, like 15 other layers of, uh, of people here in the Doomsphere that you can slowly work through. I, I mean, it, it, it took me uh, uh, 14 years to get to the bottom, but uh, as my hero Charlie Brown would say, when you think you have hit rock bottom, you hear knocking from below. Anyway, get out there and... Uh, and enjoy the upper layers of the uh, Doomsday Onion while you still can. And with that, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, go trudging through the snow to that little brown shack out back so dear to me. Bye, guys.